Hey everybody, Patty Ann here. Today I'm going to show you how you can take any stamps that you have and you never need to buy die cuts again. The other day I was watching, I think it was Gina Kay, and she was showing how to get your die cut lined up exactly on your stamped image. And it really seemed to take her such a long time to do it, I was surprised. Um, so I'm going to show you today how you can stamp these things out and just use your uh, software, Silhouette software, to print and cut them out. So I'm just going to start by doing the candles first and I'm using Stays On Ink just for this. So I'm going to uh, stamp on the candles, a cake, cupcake, a present, and the fa or the um, sentiment, happy birthday. I don't do rubber stamping very often. Usually I will buy digi stamps online and then add the offsets to them. But I wanted to show you how easy it is to do this using the stamps that you have on hand or even newly purchased ones. So you'll realize you don't have to buy the thinlets or the die cuts that to me are so costly. And actually the hardest part for me would be locating all this stuff whenever I wanted to use it. So here we go with the cupcake. I think I got it a little bit smeared on this one so I did do it twice. Not sure if I wiggled or what I did there. Ah, oh, yeah, I see me wiggling. So I didn't like how the flame turned out, so I'm going to redo that one. Okay, better. And then I'm going to do the cake and the happy birthday sentiment. Okay, the next thing I did was simply to get out my Parku markers and began to color. Uh, just so that you could see how that works when I scan this in. Now, I am going to use my scanner that's on my printer. If you don't have a scanner, you can easily just take a photo of it with your camera, and I'll show you that in a bit. Okay, I placed the image down on the bed of my scanner, and I came up here to where it says Pix for Pix Scan. And notice there's one for your camera and there's one for your scanner. I'm going to use my scanner and I'm going to change it on to the one that I have over there. And it's the HP Envy. Then it says import pick scan image from scanner. Click on that. Okay, I have a new scanner. So I had to go over there and say okay, that it's okay if it scans into my computer here and sometimes it opens right up on here and sometimes it puts a little icon down here. So if you have a new printer or scanner and yours isn't working exactly how you'd expect it to, check down here in this little trough and see if you have a little icon like this. So once I click on that to open it, I'm going to click on the second thing down that just says scan and I'm going to say OK. That's going to allow it to scan in the image that I want. Now I've been doing this a few times already, so this should probably be the fourth time. And I'll bring this in and you'll see how it works. As soon as it's done, it'll show the picture. Okay, there it is. And as I said, it's the fourth one that I've done. So here it is right here. I can click on that. And once there's the check mark, I can just drag it over here onto my Silhouette software desktop area or work area and then I can delete this. So here's what we have right here. Okay. And what I'm going to do now, I can delete this. Okay. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trace these, but I'll start with the colored ones first because they'll work differently than the others. So I'm going to come over here to the trace panel, select the trace area, and again, this is going to show you why you do not need to buy all of those um, die cuts. Okay, I'm going to up the trace a little bit. Let's scroll in so we can see more clearly. Okay, that actually looks pretty good. There's a little spot right here I'm a little worried about because it's not closed. If I up my trace, okay, if you see a little spot like this that isn't closed, a very simple remedy for that is to just come over here to the line tool, click on that, up its point size to maybe a two, and then just draw a line right here to connect this and this. And there it is, closed. So if I want to draw, collect, collect, connect another part, again, the line tool, make its point size to something like a two, and connect this and that connected. And I see one more spot right here that I might wish to connect. So I'll get the line tool again, and I'll just click here and here and that'll be connected. Okay, so now all I'm going to do is I'm going to say trace and detach. So what that's done is it allows me to move this out of the way and what I'm left with are these three candles. Now let's uh, go ahead and twirl them around so they're right side up. And of course my coloring looks really crummy but this is really, really magnified too. Okay, so I could have individual candles like this if I want to. Let me hit the back arrow for a second. I'm going to hold down my Alt key after selecting these. See how it changes my hand from a hand to a plus sign? It means I can drag another set over. So I'm going to group this set since they're still all selected. But I'm going to show you how you can take these one at a time if you want to put candles all over the place. So to put an offset on this, all you do is come over here to the right hand side. There's a star with an offset on it. If you hover over it, it says offset and I'll just offset it. And that's much bigger than what I would want for that. So I could make it a lot smaller. Maybe I just want an offset like that. And I could change its color by coming up here at the upper left hand corner. I could change its color to anything I like, but of course I'm going to change it to white. Okay. And I may just group that. Now, one of the things I might want to do is make this a smoother offset since this is jaggedy because of the way the, uh, the stamp was. I can double click on this part. Oops, let me get higher. Double click. Okay, I didn't need to group it, so I had to ungroup it again. I double click to get just the offset. I could say simplify, and that starts getting rid of some of these extra nodes that make these little indentations. Another thing you can do is, again, I just double clicked, and that gets those nodes or point editing, and I came over here to simplify. I could also just come in here, watch my hand change to a different shape. It's a diagonal line with a little square through it. When I click on one of those nodes like that, it's the active node. It means I can act on it and I'm going to delete it. And then it makes another active node and I'll delete that one too. So now look how nice that made a nice straight line right there if that's what I like. I can come over here and do the same thing. Just click on some of these nodes while they're active, they're white, and delete them and that makes it much smoother. I could click on this one right here so that it's not that big and you know I could leave it like that. Now if I was going to use this for Cricut Design Space, what I personally do is I go ahead and click on this, I grouped it, and I come up here and I change the line color of the offset. I change it to a medium gray color. Did you see that changed it? Here's what it was. It was red and if it's red and you're using this with Silhouette it will not print but it will print over there in Cricut Design Space. So I like to make it like a, a medium gray color like that. So all I would do then for Cricut is I could select this item, go File, Save Selection, because I only want to save that one candle, save it to my hard drive, 
and I'll just name it Candle for Cricut. And I'm going to save it as a JPEG. I always save them as JPEGs. PNGs don't seem to work for me, so I save it as a JPEG and go over there. If I want to, I could change these numbers, but I'll just leave them as they are. Then I'll come over to Cricut, and here's what I was working on. I've already shown these in another video I was working on. So let's go to New, Replace. I'll go to Upload, Upload an Image, Browse. There's the candle for Cricut, Open. Here it comes in. I don't want this square around it, so I'm going to say Complex and Continue. And this is where I come to the Select and Erase tool, and I'm going to erase. Now, this is one that's not worked the way I wanted it to, but this is good because it'll show you what to do. All right, so I'm going to undo that. So I tried to do the Select and Erase tool right here, and it erased all my offset that I want. Undo. All you have to do to fix that is come over here to Advanced Options and change the color tolerance to an 8. I always just start with an 8 and that seems to work. Click here and now look, it's leaving the offset right where I want it. So now I could go Continue and I want the print then cut, so Save. can open this, insert it. And there is my print and cut. You may be wondering, well now, how do I know what's going to print and cut? So I would change my blank canvas, coming down here in the lower right hand corner, change the color up here to something else. And now you can see exactly where it's going to cut around this white border. So that's how easy it is to use these things in Cricut Design Space. You can add offsets to anything and do that. And the beauty of this is too, if you do have a stamp right here, you can resize it. And you know, you, you can't resize your stamps willy-nilly any way you want. So let's go back over here to Silhouette now. And I'll get rid of all these colored ones. Now let's see. So these right here, I could have just put an offset around them. Let me show you that first. So I can just grab all them since I grouped them, come over here to the offset offset and I can leave it like this but notice that there's some crazy little shapes in here that I don't want so I'm going to make my offset bigger okay and I can say apply maybe I don't want it that. okay there's a little funny piece left in here from something else I think all right Anyway, so here we go, and here's these. And since I made it really, really big, notice that there's not that much uh, that's going to be cut. Anything that's red, that's where it's going to cut. So I don't really want it to cut right here. Let's get rid of that offset. I'd like to make a different one. Show you that again. Delete. So I'm going to come over here to these candles, which are grouped together, come to the offset panel. Click on these to highlight them and then say offset. So maybe I don't want the offset to be really, really large around them. So I could just say apply now. And then all I have to do is come in here, double click on the offset. And once I double click on it, check out what shows up, the nodes or the points that you can edit. And look at my little hand cursor. It goes from a hand to a square with a diagonal line in it. At that point, I can click on a node or a point, and it makes it white, which means it's the active node. You see that little white one right there? So watch, double click, click on a node, it turns white. That means it's the active one that I can act on, and I'm going to delete it. When I delete that one, it's going to automatically go to the next one right here. After I delete this one, it's going to go to this one, and then this one. And now where did it go? Okay, there. So I just keep hitting delete on my keyboard, and now there's no longer a cut that's going to happen in here. Same over here, I noticed something. My machine's going to cut way down in here on the offset and go like this and come back. I don't think that's necessary. 
So again, with these selected, I could click on one, <coughs> excuse me, and delete it. Or I could hold down my shift key and select all these ones right here and hit delete. And notice what that did now. It made my offset just come like this. So that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to group this together and pull it off my mat here so you can see what it's going to look like. Okay, we didn't color the offset right yet, right? So I need to select the offset, come over here to this color area and make it white. But you know what happened? I had it grouped. So I want to ungroup this because all I really want to color is the offset like that. Okay, so that's perfect. I'll group this back together. And this will work perfectly just like this in Silhouette Studio. If I go to Send, here they are. Notice the red lines and that shows where it's going to cut. The reason why it's cutting inside of this, let's scroll in, inside all around the candle and outside is because we have cut selected right here. I need to tell my machine I just want to cut the edge and now look and see what it's going to cut just around the edge of the offset. But just to confuse you again, let's think about if you're using this for Cricut Design Space. What do I recommend that you do? Right now this offset line is red. I recommend you come up here to the line area and change that color to a medium gray. And I'll show you one more time if we right click on this. No, if we select this and go File. Save selection, save it to the hard drive. I'll just name it three candles. And I'll save it as a JPEG. <clears throat> and I'll leave these numbers all alone and say save. Come over to Cricut Design Space, upload, upload an image, browse, three candles, open. There they are, complex, continue. And again, I'm going to use this to see if it's going to get rid of my offset. And oh, oh, he did get rid of it. So I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to change this advanced options, change the color tolerance to an 8. And now I'll see if I can go here. See that? And get all these little spots. Okay, I think I got them all. So I'd continue. Again, here it is. Save. So probably I would have spent $20, $25 to get this die cut to cut out these few items that I have. And you can see how easy it is to do this if you have the Silhouette software. Now, if you have a Silhouette software and you're using a Cameo, you don't have to have the Business Edition for this. If you're trying to use this with your Cricut machine, you must have the Business Edition to be able to save your file as a JPEG. Okay. So let's go back again to Silhouette, and now let's look at those ones that we never did. Let's get rid of all this stuff. Delete. And bring this over here, and now let's just see what will happen when we try to do a, like the cupcake. So what I would do again is just go to Trace, select the Trace area, and Trace. Ah, uh, We can scroll way in so we can see it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's see if we up the threshold a little bit. Does it look a little smoother lined? Yeah, maybe. So then I would just say trace. Move this out. So now we have this traced. And I would change the line, the color to black and the line color to black just so we can see what it's going to look like. <clears throat> and that's it. That's what this is going to look like. However, remember now, our goal here is to put an offset on these or pretend like we spent 20, 25 bucks to get the little thinlets or the die cuts. You don't need them. Just come over here to the offset panel and say offset. That put a huge offset around that. You may not want it that big. So you can make it a 0 
five. Enter. Okay, now that's a smaller offset, and I like that better, but look at it, it made these really weird things right here, but we can get rid of those easily, peasily. So I'm just gonna say apply, and I'm gonna click on, I'm gonna come up here to object, release the compound path, we put your boxes around everything. Then I'm gonna hold down my shift key and just select the cupcake, which deselects it actually. And then I can just hit delete on my keyboard and get rid of those. So that's one way you can do it. And then you can put this right back in here. Change the offsets color to whatever color you like. I'll make it white. And group these two things together. And let's drag it off the mat over here. So you can see it, and there is what it looks like. Isn't that pretty? Here's the thing again, though. When you buy the thinlets or the die cuts, they go around one size cupcake. Maybe you're making a big uh, card, and you just want a cupcake right smack dab in the middle of your card. You could make this thing any size you want it to be and print this out just like that. So let me go and show you. I'll go to, let's scroll back out for a sec. I'm going to bring this over here and I'm going to pretend like I'm making it for a large card, just like that. And then maybe I'll make you know, another one, and another one, and another one. Okay, so now what I'd need to do if I'm using this in Silhouette is just come up here to the Page Setup panel and put on the registration marks by coming to the third icon over and say On, and there they are. And I could just go ahead and print these. But there's one more thing you could do with this if you wanted to. I could ungroup this. And I could come to this one and say, release the compound path. However, I would probably change that color of that so we could see the pieces. And now what that's going to allow me to do is color in the various parts of this. However, I notice there's one problem right here, and I could have fixed that in the very beginning. So let's see. Object. Let's see, I'm just going to get rid of this one and hit delete. So let me show you this one, uh, ungroup. Okay, so I just want this. So again, what I want to show you how you can fix this easily is to scroll way in here. And remember what we just did? We see there's an opening right there. So we can close that by coming right here to the line tool. I have my line tool still set at a two. I can click and draw right through there. And then that closed that right up. And now if I want to, I can scroll out a little bit. And now I can re-select the trace area. And trace, move this guy out. I'll delete this one. And now this one's going to be really good because I'm going to change its color to black, change the line color to black. And now, as I said, well, actually on this one right here now, um, I'm not going to change its color to black. I'm going to change it to a lighter color so we can see more clearly. There it is. And now I'm going to say object, release the compound path. And you remember on the other one where we released the compound path, there was a strange opening right here where I couldn't color this one. Let me show you. Let's get another one of these. Bring him over. Okay. This is the other one that we had worked on. And if I ungroup this one, because I want to get rid of the offset, right? 
And if I want it to be just like this one, all I would do is change this color to that same greenish color. And now the next thing that I do is I go to Object, Release the Compound Path. Notice this. It's not going to let me color in that part of that cupcake. And the reason being is when I trace this, this wasn't connected. So obviously if I try to pour paint in here, it's going to slip right back out. When I connected it by doing the line, and you can review this to see what I did, that allows me to connect it. So now I can click this, hold down my shift key, this, this, and this, and I can copy, or I can color those any color I'd like. Pink. Okay. And I can color the candle, hit down the shift and get that part of the candle, and maybe make it a little darker pink. I can make this a yellow... Okay, and then I could just go around here and change the colors of a lot of these things. And make those yellow. And then the last thing I would do if I was making this and wanted to print it like this, I could just select the outside. Now notice I know I have the outside because there's a box around all of it. And I also know based on this color over here, the, the outermost color is that greenish blue color. I'm going to change it back to black. And now look at that. Let me get rid of this one. Okay, we do have a little tiny bit of a problem with this one. I want to show you something. This is all black, right? I could put some black Jiminy's up here if I wanted to, or I could change them to any color I want. If I wanted them, well, let me change them to pink. I think I will change them to pink. Okay. So I'm going to make all of those pink. Whoops, I missed one. Pink. All right, but look at this. I want you to see something here. This inner part of this should have been yellow. So I'm going to change that to yellow. Now these outer parts, I want them to be black. So in order to make them black, I'll just click on this piece, hold down my shift key, click on the cupcake, come over here to the modify panel and say subtract. So what that did was it subtracted that right out so the black underneath shows through. Okay, I'll do it again. Click on this piece, hold down my shift key, click on this, and say crop. Oh, oh, not crop, subtract. This one, shift. What I want to subtract that out of, I don't want that color blue in there, I want that out. Subtract. This yellow one, I don't want it to be yellow. I want to subtract that yellow out of this color subtract and same with this this and subtract okay so the only other thing i could do if i wanted to was to change these stripe colors but i think i'll just leave them as they are because it's kind of cute so i'll just group all this back together and make maybe make it a little bit smaller so let's scroll back out where's the cupcake here's the cupcake we were going to do and, oh, but wait, we're not done yet, remember? Again, what we're doing is making offsets for these. So let me make an offset for this one. So I just come over to the offset panel, which is the star, say offset. And there it is. I'm pleased with the way that offset looks. I'll change its color to white. Click off, and there it is. And group this all together like that. So that's how easy it is to color things even in your software. You could put patterns, you could put uh, gradients, anything, or you can just print out all of your stamps like this. And again, if you hold down Alt and drag one down, you can make them different sizes. Alt, drag another one. Alt, Alt, make it bigger. Okay, I'm just going to print this out for you now so you can see, and then I'll cut it. And that should be just about it. So I'm going to go to File and Print. 
<clears throat> and looks good. So I'm going to say print. I'm going to do it with my HP, not my Epson. That's my sublimation one. My HP. Preferences if I want to. I could change the preferences to best for my print quality and say OK. And print. Okay, that's going to print over there. I'll show you what it looks like. And then I'll cut it out with my portrait. Okay, it's been printed out. The top one up here is the one that I colored with the computer, as you'll recall. This one down here I just quickly, quickly colored with some markers. And now I'm ready to go ahead and put this into my portrait. Notice that it does have the registration marks. Okay, I'm going to click Send. And notice where all the cut lines are. Look at that. It's going to cut every little smidgen of these pieces out. It's not what I want. Highlight everything and just come over here and change it from cut to cut edge. And that is exactly what we want. So it's right now connecting up to my portrait. And you can see what it's going to cut. That nice offset we made. It would work the same way in Cricut. It would do the same thing as a print and cut in Cricut. So I'll cut this for you now and I'll be back to show you. Okay, here they are all cut out. Um, as you can see, the one in the upper right hand corner is the one that I colored within the software. And the one below it is the one that I simply colored quickly with some markers. So the neat thing about, again, using this software is that you can use a stamp, no matter what size it is, and make it much larger or smaller. Uh, this stamp probably was somewhere between the green one and the one I'm going to show you right now. But I was able to make it larger and smaller. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider getting the software. Try out the free version down below. And then after you do that, go ahead and grab the, the business edition so that you can use it for your Cricut machine. So again, thanks for joining me. I sure appreciate it. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share it. See y'all again soon.